So it's my pleasure uh, at the start of the conference to introduce your president, Mr. Rab Fletcher. Rab. Good morning. I wasn't expecting such a quick intro. I thought it would be a wee bit longer than that. So, yeah. um, Ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to the Biza National Conference 2022. Isn't it great to be back in the room, eh? Yep, I think we've had enough of webinars, eh? Zoom, webinars and podcasts are fantastic ways to stay in touch with what is going on. But sometimes there really is no substitute for being in the room with colleagues, friends and competitors. Anyone who isn't here today may well have missed a key conversation or chance meeting that can change their business. And they won't have heard or engaged with our wild field of experts from across the industry and beyond. As David likes to say, they won't know what they don't know. Today, we are unpicking what it means to bring buildings to life and make our built environment fit for people, fit for purpose and fit for life. We're extremely grateful to all our speakers for giving so generously of their time and expertise and to our headline sponsor, Mitsubishi Electric, for making this event possible. The fantastic support we received from all our sponsors, affiliates and exhibitors, along with the high volume of early bookings for tonight's Biza National Awards, meant we were able to make registration free to our members and the clients of Bisa Group companies. It was, great to give, it was great to be able to give something back to our members at this difficult time. And we're also making a £10 donation to the mental health charity Lighthouse Club for every delegate here today. So thank you again for coming. I'd like to give a, a big vote of thanks to Charlie Piermont and our team for putting together an amazing programme with the considerable support of the advisory board, which was a very successful innovation this year, although she did forget to book me a room, funnily enough. Having the expert input of members and industry colleagues at the very start of the process made a great difference, and is why we have such a varied programme and wide range of speakers, able to focus on topics as crucial and diverse as the skills we need to address building safety and sustainability making buildings resilient to health threats, the politics and practicalities of net zero, what building engineers will be doing far into the future, how the economic uncertainty is affecting building engineering firms, improving diversity and opportunities for young engineers. Professor Kath Oakes, OBE, will deliver the keynote address after lunch. That is one that is not to be missed. This conference is taking place at a crucial time for the UK and for the industry. BISA has been around for almost 120 years, so it's fair to say that we've seen plenty of crises come and go. But is this year different? We have an energy crisis, a cost of living crisis, a climate change crisis, a building safety crisis. You get the picture, eh? However, out of all this gloom, we, we can take some encouragement. Many of us have been arguing in favour of, en of energy efficiency, of the need to conserve this precious resource and reduce demand to minimise the environmental impact for years, but it's hard to get clients to invest. Now the financial argument has changed. Energy bills are a major worry for everyone and central to the cost of living crisis. And the war in Ukraine has pushed energy security to the top of the worry list. While politicians are looking for quick fixes and short-term sticking plasters, our industry will be central to efforts to put this right for the long term. BISA is pushing hard for a fully funded national programme of building retrofits. Not just better insulation, but using all the engineering tools at our disposal to make buildings perform better. Better heating and cooling technologies, better building envelopes, better control systems, the works. This is also the best and most cost-effective way to reduce carbon emissions in line with the net zero targets. Retrofit is not the whole story though. We need to look at reuse as well. The pandemic has had a huge impact on how commercial buildings are being used. Research from the property industry shows that two-thirds of deaths in the UK are regularly unused. And even on the busiest days, offices are more than half empty. People are now coming into the office just 1.4 days a week on average, 
compared with nearly four days a week before the pandemic. This is both an opportunity and a challenge. It can no longer be business as usual for the way building services are managed and operated. We need to seize the opportunity to take a more flexible approach that can deliver financial savings and reduce energy use and carbon emissions. And by being more adaptable, we can meet some of our social goals. How can it be acceptable for valuable indoor spaces to be empty or sparsely used when we have a huge shortage of quality homes and facilities for large parts of our population? Buildings must be adapted to deal with the effects of climate change, not least overheating. That is an area where BISA members have a huge expertise and can make all the difference. And where we can help educate politicians and end users who maybe find this hard to grasp. We are all grappling with inflation and rising costs. But as building services engineers, we are lucky that we can do something about them. And that gives me at least one reason to be cheerful. This is the cheerful face, by the way and gives a special meaning to many of the things that we will be discussing today. It's going to be a busy day, so I'll get off the stage and let you get down to business and networking. It's great to see you all back in the room today, it truly is. Have a great conference, and I look forward to seeing many of you again at our closing session and then at the National Awards this evening. So thank you very much, have a great day, and I'll pass you back to David. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, Rab. So, uh, what strange times we live in. This was my opening line at the conference in 2020. Uh, and I went on to say, there is so much uncertainty. When we, will we be able to return to some kind of normality? Well, welcome to the new normality. We've swapped COVID, Trump, and Brexit for COVID, Trump's return, and Brexit, plus the Ukraine, a cost of living crisis, recession, and political chaos. So I wouldn't normally talk about politics at an engineering conference, but politics clearly matter. As do economics and as do numbers, and as you all know, in this room, rule one of business is do not surprise your stakeholders, particularly if you want to borrow their money. Trust and reputation take years to build and can be shredded overnight. So according to economic orthodoxy, all a good economy needs is currency stability, a sustainable bond market, and competent politics. Yet this economic crisis really didn't happen overnight. From the moment Michael Gove said, we've had enough of listening to experts, facts no longer mattered. It's how you feel about the facts rather than the facts them themselves that counts. So that's, of course, uh, errant nonsense. But it means you can turn economic orthodoxy on its head. You can hollow out and undermine the civil service, for example, and the courts, upon which the UK's reputation for good government has been based. Now, I'm sounding a bit like yesterday's Home Secretary's comments about a Guardian reading tofu-eating wokerati. But I mention this because obviously we need an economic plan. We need certainty, stability. In order to consider how you are going to invest in the future for growth, facts matter. Truth matters. Trust matters. And as Suzanne Moore, who's a Telegraph, Daily Telegraph columnist, said, and she's not a, a renowned liberal, the government is there to serve us, not simply keep itself in power. We surely cannot have another two years of this mess. As we at BISA tell government and argue to government 
How can you expect people to invest in growth based upon policy that you have a pretty good idea will change when the pressure comes on? We spent an inordinate amount of time informing members about IR35, why it was changing and what they needed to do. The policy is implemented, then it's reversed, then there's a U-turn and it's unreversed. It's bewildering to people, it's bewildering to us who just run a business. People who run a business, you just want to do a good job, not second guess politics. So what hope is there of persuading people that we need to take net zero, net zero seriously because by 2050 we will be net zero? Are we? Do we believe that won't be watered down? What price the Building Safety Act when we know there's another bonfire of regulations on its way? In my roundup of last year, uh, this year's AGM, which was in July, uh, the future of Boris Johnson was at stake, and I said, I'm not sure by the end of this speech whether or not we will have the same Prime Minister. The same could be said today, I think, and I'm trusting that someone will tell me if Jeremy Hunt resigns between now and then. <laughs> uh, you can laugh, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we certainly need political stability and a government we can trust. And as this Prime Minister, or this week's Prime Minister says, we need someone who can deliver, deliver, deliver. But as the Stoic philosophers say, you can only need to worry about the stuff you can change. The rest will happen anyway, so accept it. So today, we're really focused on the stuff that matters to you. I was really struck that in today's programme we have a session on the human building why a building is like a human body and what it means for its services. So a combination this year of age, genes and an accident means that I've had the dubious pleasure of a camera in every single orifice. So oversharing a bit early. <laughs> Believe it or not, in 18 hours time you'll be doing far more at the bar than I am now. So as I say, the camera in each one, four different doctors and so I asked one of them, why you have a camera there? Why can you not have a look at the other thing? And he said, what on earth has that got to do with me? That's how we treat many of our customers. My favorite job when I was a contractor was a job called the Hotel Duvan in Birmingham. I lost it on price and then was called back to sort out the problems afterwards, which I'm sure you can all imagine came with a huge amount of schadenfreude. And I walked into the plant room and on the control room panel was a list of telephone numbers. In the event of hot water failure, call this number. In the event of heating failure, call this number. If the ventilation fails, call this number. The subtext was from the contractor, what on earth has it got to do with me? So when we compare the body to the buildings, which we, which we should do, that's what we often do. But why is this important? Because buildings and bodies are holistic, integrated systems, not parts assembled to look like the design. What we should, and you will see what we are focused on today, is work out how those systems as a whole perform, because that is what matters. It's important, and why are you important? Because 90% of us spend 90% of our time in a building. So the social good that results from good building engineering services is massive. The well-being of occupants, both their physical and mental health, is significant. And we can also significantly mitigate the climate crisis through carbon reductions. So we are important. The current way we design and build leads to broken buildings, and I evidence that through the energy performance gap and Grenfell. But also broken people, this mad hurry-scurry build and design process we use leads to two suicides 
a day in our industry. And it's one of the reasons today we're supporting the Lighthouse Club, and your donations are very much appreciated, and they will go some way to treating the symptoms of this broken process while we continue to try and build a better, fairer industry that delivers high-quality buildings and treats those that work within it with respect. So there is much today about interpreting regulations and policy and technologies, and we have some great experts here today, so I do hope we will listen to them. And I'd like to thank the advisory board uh, who we use this year for selecting such a great program and great speakers. There is a focus on what, things, what impact things will have on you and when it will happen. Is it something you should prepare for? And as ever, you'll gain most from it from asking questions. But it be the stuff that you don't know you don't know that will be of the most value. And that's the stuff where opportunity lies or a threat lies. And it almost certainly isn't on the programme, but it will be amongst the conversations you have amongst yourselves and you'll find out something you don't know you don't know. The rest you can Google. So one final thing that I'd like to announce today, and that is that I have great pleasure in announcing that our head of technical, Graham Fox, who's here today, is as of today our director of technical at BISA. I'm sure you will all recognize that Graham has done much to promote members' interests in the UK and internationally. He is the president-elect of the Institute of Refrigeration, taking that on from the 3rd of November. So I'm sure you will wish to join me in congratulating Graham on his promotion. So, enjoy the day, three theatres, please participate, uh, and I no doubt will bump into you over coffee at some point during the day. Thank you. <laughs>